Earlier this morning, we had a speaker from Switzerland saying that Switzerland was a very small country. Later on, we had an Icelandic speaker saying that Switzerland was small. Iceland, Iceland is very small. And now it's my turn. If Switzerland is small, Iceland is very small. I guess the France are microscopic in comparison to them. And part of my French, yeah, but I guess it's very rare and maybe unhandy that you have <coughs> men um, bragging about who has the smallest population uh, in Europe. Well, there you go. That's a start. That's, a, that's, that's maybe the beginning. Because Richard Hamilton, he asked me uh, last week that I'd like to attend uh, the discussion uh, or discussion with Hamilton in the upcoming conference in Zurich. And I'm like her, I am a politician, so I say yes, of course. And then I get Mike, I say yeah. And my second question was, uh, what's it about? And he told me it's about the alternative EU design and its practical implementation. And I said, yeah, all right. I might not be the right guy, and that's nothing to do with that's nothing to do with my inexperience and young age. Uh, but the Fair Islands are not part of the he used. But then again, the discussion, the topic is about alternative EU design. And I'm going to stick or be faithful to the word alternative in this uh, speech. But it's a problem to have to answer that question. Um, because what I'm going to say is that I am, just like Dan said, I am going to tell you about the experience that we have had with the EU. And I have to be very careful uh, now because we have our Islamic friends over there and we see them. Because yesterday the Islamic representatives said they will not attend today. So I made one speech for the Islamic, they're not here. But now they are here, so I'll just keep it in that. And now I'm just going to talk about how we, the Far Islands, with a population of 50,000 people, manage. The European Union single handedly. What's about? It's about two fish stocks, mackerel and herring. In 2009, uh, there was scientific evidence that the distribution of stock was controlled. And just to tell you how complex it is, I'll try to make it simple. How simple that is. Mackerel stays. In European waters, we used to stop it from January to May, and it ferries waters from half of May, June, half October, and then it goes to Norwegian waters from October, November to uh, February, and then it goes back to, to European waters. And as you can imagine, uh, there's a conflict of interest. And it's the same with herring, but with herring, it only stays in Norwegian, ferries, and Atlantic waters. Not EU waters. I'll come back to that later. Um, so, as I said, there's a conflict of interest, but we are very civilized up north um, because we have the United Nations Convention on Law of the Sea. And in there, in Article 57, to make it short, it says, for the same stock or stocks of associated species occurred within the exclusive number of the few or more coastal states. Uh, to agree upon the measures necessary to coordinate and ensure the conservation and development of such stocks without prejudice. So they basically have, have to negotiate. That's what it is. And in 2009, the firm said to the EU and Norway, I'm going to be sitting in front of you, we made our opinion clear and said we did not accept the allocation of the key, we did not accept our quota. So more macro and heavy composed. And as you can imagine, um, the EU were not very happy with us. They said we were uh, pirates and whatnot. And when we once we told the race our opinion to the EU in 2009, they said, hey, hey, if you do it, we're going to sanction you. We're going to sanction you. And the funny part is, well, they did not have the authorization to sanction us because that's against the or, the, or, or yeah, the laws of the EPO. 
So what do they do? Well, they did what they do best. They just pass to create a new law, a new rule. On the 25th of October 2012, the EU passed a regulation, another item 26 of 2012, of the European Parliament and of the Council of on certain measures for the purpose of the conservation of fish stocks in relation to countries around non sustainable fishery. I'm not going into detail about this law, but in there it says that. The EU are allowed to restrict the importation of fish products, restrict the access of ports for uh, for use of vessels, for fishing, for countries fishing the stock of coming into under the control of the country, allowing non-sustainable fishing. This is the funny part, because we have an objective uh, institution provides it, who actually support our claim that there is there is more natural barriers. But with this law, the EU became the prosecutor for the accusing uh, of the pirates. They became the judge, judging us. And what they became after that, they became the execution of us, they banned us. This is very rare. In, uh, on 17 May 2013, that was last year, the EU sent the Ferry Government a letter telling them about this Article 6. And they gave us a month to reply. Do you think like a month? Yes, We have a very mobile, a very good uh, minister, a minister, so um, people working at the night and day. They managed to reply, they didn't help because in August we were banned. We were banned uh, because. Faroe Islands were fishing natural and herring in Faroe's water. That's what we We were banned from the EU to constantly fishing natural and herring within Faroe's borders, in our own backyard. It's very rare. Long story short, in March this year, we managed to get an agreement with the EU for natural food. Triple our quota in June, a month ago. We managed to double our quotas on Harry, and therefore the EU lifted the ban. But the core of this dispute is not fish, it's natural resources. That's the main thing. Like gold, oil, diamond, natural resources. That's why we, I guess, fellow conservatives, a realist on nature. The nature of the government is to protect the people and the interests of the people, at least the interests of the reason. And this right is written in international law that we have to obey, respect. In our case, the EU did not respect our sovereignty. And that's the problem. They bullied us for a few years, they threatened us. And they eventually banned it. But that only made our groups stronger. If we were if our country to fight for politically, somehow the EU managed to unite us against them. What we want to well, we have to bear in mind and remember is that in 1970, the UN passed a law, the Declaration of Principle, international law concerning friendly relations and cooperation among states, where it says, and I have to quote what it says today, no state may use or encourage the use of economic, political, or any other type of measures to coerce another state in order to obtain from it subordination of the exercise of its sovereign rights and to secure from it advantages of any kind. That was written in 1970. In 1980, we passed the United Nations Measure Law of the Sea, and there in Article 56, I quote, in the exclusive economic zone, the coastal state, that's the Ferrari, has sovereign rights for the purpose of exploring and exploiting, conserving and managing the natural resources. Again, 
you had rights based on international law. So that was something that the EU could not respect. Well, that is what we should do. This is where we are trying to answer the question. This is what we should do. They should respect sovereign states. And maybe we're not part of them, or you are. Maybe we should give the people the sovereignty back. Like I think the slogan of the ACR is to free the people, free markets, and free enterprise. That should be the essence of the new EU as a new EU. And just to, to explain a little bit, we did a poll, opinion poll, in May, or April and May this year on the ACR. And there, 54% of people said no to the EU. 27% said we did not intend to go, and only 19% said yes to the EU. And I'm optimistic of nature. If I read that opinion, it says 81% of the people are against the EU. So look at the Danish party, or Danish People Party that I met yesterday. They have a majority. Look at UK, France, EU skeptics one. What I think we have to do is we have to go back to the basics. Free trade, free trade between free and southern states, less bureaucracy, free markets, free people, and strong sovereign states. Very good.